It is time for season number two here in the NIU Dynasty as Coach Brooks and the Huskies open up the year at home against Texas Tech who are ranked number 14 in the country to start season number two. Our defense is going to have its hands full trying to stop Cameron Valdez, the 88 overall senior halfback for the Red Raiders. But perhaps even a bigger problem is on defense, Ben Roberts, the junior linebacker, one of the best in the country for Texas Tech. Coach Brooks still hadn't made an announcement on who was going to be the starter quarterback headed into the season as fans would have to wait until the first drive to see if it would be Kenny Luth or last year's starter Ethan Hampton getting the call at QB1 for the Huskies this year. With all of that out of the way let's head down to the field as the Huskies get ready to take on Texas Tech. Jake Siebert had the ball teed up for the Huskies and we were underway here in DeKalb as Texas Tech would take this in the end zone for a touchback. That would bring out Burn Morton and the Red Raiders offense led by the senior quarterback as his first pass on the day would be be completed. Bringing up now a second and two is on the read option. Morton would keep it himself. He would have the first down in more inside the 30 of the Huskies. Where on third and three, they would go to Cameron Valdez on the draw, but the Huskies defense was all over that. So Texas Tech would send out their field goal unit, but this kick would be no good. It was now time for the fans to find out that Ethan Hampton had been named the starting quarterback for the Huskies by Coach Brooks as they'd give it off to Jalen Poe for the first play. Backed up now to a third and eight. Hampton's first pass of the day would be completed to Kenji Lewis. And then on third and one, they'd go right back to the sophomore halfback who couldn't pick up the first down. So Coach Brooks would keep his offense on the field and they would just barely pick it up. Coach Brooks and the Huskies were being aggressive here in their first game of the season as Jalen Poe would slip a tackle and pick up the first down. And the ball would go right back to him as he would take this up the middle and inside the five yard line for the Huskies. As on second and goal, Ethan Hampton would drop back the throw and he'd find Kenji Kenji Lewis for a touchdown. We were off to a good start through the first quarter and we wanted to see if that could continue in the second as we would get pressure on Burden Morton and force him to throw it away on third down. But now we were trying to avoid three and out on our first drive in the second quarter. So we would go for it again on fourth down and pick up the first. Third and eight was a different story. If we couldn't pick it up here, we were gonna have to punt, which we would. So with no points on that drive, we needed to get a stop here to protect our lead over Texas Tech. It was looking like this could be a very defensive battle here in the second quarter, but we would pick up a first down. And that would be true freshman tight end Kevin Shaughnessy's first career reception for us here with the Huskies. We were hoping to see big things from him as he was stepping up to fill the role of tight end two after senior Grayson Barnes graduated last year, who was our leading receiver. As speaking of Shaughnessy, he would get us almost in the end zone here in this play, but would be just short. So on third and goal, it would be our other tight end, Jake Applegate, who would get us into the end zone for six. That still left a little bit of time for Texas Tech on the clock as they were going down and trying to score before half as they were pretty close if not already in field goal range but senior Kevin Session would come up with a huge sack for the Huskies and that would take them out of field goal range as the Red Raiders would have one last shot which wasn't enough and we would keep our 14 to nothing lead headed into halftime. My biggest takeaway from the first half was how well Jalen Poe was adjusting as a starter. He didn't get any touches last year as a redshirt freshman and was looking great today. Of course that didn't mean we were going to rely on him as much as we did on Tario Brown last season as we did have senior Ethan Hampton still leading us showing off his wheels. But on third and three we would go ahead and give it to Poe to try to pick up the first but he would be short so we would keep the offense on the field to try to get another first down and it looked like we had one but they said our forward momentum took us back. So the ball would go back over to Texas Tech who would finally get a fourth down stop today and they would set up a halfback screen to Cameron Valdez who would pick up their biggest gain yet of the game. That would set up a first and ten past midfield as Morton would drop back to throw and he would find Micah Hudson deep for a touchdown. And the Red Raiders had finally got themselves on the board for the first time here in the third quarter and our lead now was only down to one possession. We were hoping to change that though on this drive but on third and eight, Hampton would be hit as he throws. So Texas Tech would get another defensive stop but our defense thankfully would come out and get one of our own. A touchdown on this drive might put the game away for us against Texas Tech. But on third and one, Ethan Hampton had pressure coming off the right side and we couldn't convert so we would send Jake Siebert out for a 49 yard field goal and it looked good but would bounce off the right upright so Texas Tech was still in this game but our defense would come up clutch with a stop that meant we had another chance to put this game away as on third and six Kenji Lewis would pick up the first down and more past midfield and we would give it off to Jalen Poe on third and three but he wouldn't be able to pick up the first down we would send Jake Siebert back out to try to redeem himself as he would knock down this field goal but there'd be a flag 
leg, and it would be a running into the kicker penalty against Texas Tech. That would give us new life as on second and one, Jalen Poe would find the end zone, and that put us up by 14 with under a minute and a half to go here in the game against Texas Tech. That didn't mean this game was over though, as Burn Morton would drop back and find Cameron Veldez out of the backfield and would slip one tackle into the end zone. So if we wanted to win this game, we needed to recover this onside kick as we would do just that with our hands team. And Ethan Hampton would come out and take a knee, and the NIU Huskies would upset number 14 Texas Tech at home, as it looked like it was the right decision to start Ethan Hampton, as while he wasn't spectacular, he played a great game to help us get this win. That would bring us to our second game of the season as we were taking on Maryland, and I'll be honest, for a Big Ten team, they didn't have the greatest of rosters, and it looked like this was actually going to be a pretty evenly matchup headed into this game. The Terrapins were led by senior quarterback Billy Edwards Jr., as him in the offense would get things started here as the Huskies had a chance to get a third down stop, but Edwards would connect with his halfback Devin Roche to pick up the first down, and then it would be Josiah McLaurin picking up the first down for the Terrapins, getting them onto NIU's side of the field, and then on second and four, Jacob Finley, the junior, would pick off Edwards' pass intended for Shalik Knotts, and this would be taken all the way back for an NIU pick six. And just like that, without the offense coming onto the field, the Huskies had jumped out to a 7 to nothing lead over Maryland. The Terrapins were looking to change that, though, as Billy Edwards had gotten them down deep inside NIU territory. And then on second and goal, it would be a handoff to Devin Roach, who would find his way into the end zone, which would now bring out Ethan Hampton and the NIU offense for the first time today. Things were not off to a great start as Kellen Wyatt would get a sack on Hampton, bringing up a long third and 16 as he dropped back to throw and he would find Jake Applegate, but he would be just short of the first down so Coach Brooks would keep his offense on the field and sure enough Jalen Poe, the sophomore halfback, would help pick up the first down for the Huskies. That would help keep this drive alive, giving the Huskies still a chance to score this possession. And on third and goal, they would do just that as Jalen Poe would find the end zone. Maryland was looking to respond on their next drive, but Billy Edwards would throw another interception as Andre Cobb would take this back for a pick six. And it really doesn't seem like the NIU secondary has missed a beat after losing all of those seniors last offseason. There's still some inexperience on the defensive side of the ball though for Huskies as seen by plays like this. As Maryland now had made it across midfield and Edwards would drop back and he would find Shalik Knotts for a first down in more as he would take this inside the 10 into the end zone for a touchdown. And it was now back to being only a one possession game here for the Terrapins. NIU was looking to extend it on this drive as they were getting a healthy dose of both passing and running the ball, but ultimately they would come up short of the end zone as this pass completion would be short of the first down marker, but Jake Siebert would knock home this field goal for the Huskies. With only a minute and a half to go in the first half, a defensive stop here would be huge for the Huskies and they'd get just that, but again, the inexperience would show on the defensive side of the ball for the Huskies as they would get flagged for a running into the the punter penalty here on this punt. That would give the Terrapins a fresh set of downs and new life on this drive as Josiah McLaren would get inside the 20, but they'd have another chance to get a third down stop, but Preston Howard had other ideas for the Terrapins as he would find the end zone. 26 seconds left in the half and you'd think the Huskies would run it, but no, Ethan Hampton would throw it and Caleb Wheatland, the senior linebacker, would pick it off inside the 20, giving the Terrapins great fuel position and a chance to take the lead before half, but Jake Gassaway would come up huge for the Huskies defense with an interception, and we would hold our three-point lead headed into halftime. That lead wasn't going to last long for us as Caleb Wheatland would come away with his second interception to start the second half, and this time it would be taken back for a touchdown. So for the first time in this game today, NIU was now trailing by four points to the Maryland Terrapins here in the third quarter. They were looking to change that though, as on second 17, Ethan Hampton would find Kevin Shaughnessy, and he would find the end zone for the touchdown. That would be the true freshman's first ever career touchdown here with the NIU Huskies. It was now time to see if the defense could match the offense and get a third down stop, but they would not be able to. As with a fresh set of downs, Maryland decided they would want to take a deep shot on play action. Billy Edwards back to throw, and he would find Octavian Jr. Smith. And the senior receiver from Burtonsville, Maryland would put the Terrapins back up in front of the Huskies by four points. That would quickly change those on third and eight. Hampton feeling the pressure would roll out to his left, throw into the end zone for Kevin Shaughnessy, and once again the true freshman tight end for the Huskies would get another touchdown on the board. NIU with a chance to get a defensive
defensive stop here on third and seven as they would force Edwards Jr. to throw this ball away. And the Terrapins would send out their field goal unit as this kick would be up and it would be far right. No good on the three point attempt, but the Huskies now had a situation of their own as on third and 22, Kyle Thomas would take the sweep and he'd have nothing but green in front of him as he'd find the end zone. But there would be a holding penalty against the Huskies, backing them up to a third and 29 and the sweep play wouldn't work this time. With just over a minute to go, Billy Edwards Jr. and the Terrapins offense would get another shot here at the end zone and they'd find themselves inside the five on second and goal. Edwards back to throw and he'd find Devin Roche out of the backfield for a touchdown. As that now left Ethan Hampton in the offense under 40 seconds to try to get down the field for a touchdown. A field goal wouldn't do it for the Huskies here as on third and four, Caleb Wheatland would come away with his third interception of the day for Maryland. And all the offense would have to do is come out and run out the clock as Maryland would complete the comeback win 42 to 38 over the Huskies thanks in part to Caleb Wheatland's three interception day. Despite the loss though, I was very impressed with how true freshman tight end Kevin Shaughnessy performed for us in this game. And we did manage to sign our first recruit of the season and three-star right guard Chad Abbott, who although we didn't know his development trait, seemed to be a solid pickup for the offensive line next season. Despite that, things weren't going to get any easier for us this season as next episode we'd get ready to travel on the road to take on SEC opponent Mississippi State in our week three matchup.